Hi everybody. I'm going to read you a story today called Slippy Socks and Bulo is going to leave so that I can read this story. Right, Bulo? Chapter 1. Annabelle was in her room when her mother called. Breakfast, Annabelle, said her mother from the kitchen. This is what Annabelle had been waiting for. She had her best slippy socks on her feet, and she eagerly jumped up and ran out of her bedroom. She paused at the doorway, then set off running down the long hallway. She ran past her brother's bedroom, past the bathroom, past her baby sister's bedroom, and just past her parents' bedroom. It was there that she planted her feet, braced herself, and slid on the smooth wood floor out of the hallway and into the foyer. Halfway across the foyer, crash! Annabelle slid right into her mother, who had just walked into the foyer from the kitchen. My goodness, said her mother, catching herself before dropping the plate of pancakes in her hand. Where do you think you're going? I'm practicing my sliding, said Annabelle. Well, you'd better be careful, said her mother, leading her back into the kitchen, or someday you're going to slide all the way to China. Is it a long way to China, asked Annabelle as she sat down and poured syrup on her pancakes. It's a very long way, said her mother. Then I'll have to keep practicing, said Annabelle. Chapter 2 The next morning when her mother called her for breakfast, Annabelle backed all the way up to the very end of the hallway, then ran as hard as she could, past her bedroom, past her brother's bedroom, the bathroom, her sister's bedroom, all the way to the door of her parents' bedroom, where she planted her feet and slid out of the hall, across the foyer, and crash! She slid into the end table on the other side of the foyer. Did I just hear a little girl slide by, said her father, who was sitting at the kitchen table reading the newspaper. That's Annabelle, said her mother. She's practicing so that she can slide all the way to China. All the way to China, said her father, as Annabelle came into the kitchen. Yes, said Annabelle, sitting down at the table. It's a very long way, so I'll have to practice very hard. That evening after dinner, Annabelle practiced sliding up and down the hall until her parents told her that it was time for bed. She did one last slide right to the door of her bedroom, then hopped across the room and into bed. Chapter 3 Annabelle woke up early the next day and decided to see if she could slide all the way across the foyer. She'd asked her father to move the end table out of the way. She pulled on her socks, skipped out of her room, then ran all the way down the hall. Right at the end of the hall, she planted her feet and crash! She fell down onto the hard wood floor. What had happened? Annabelle's mother hurried out of her room when she heard the crash. My goodness, Annabelle, she said. What did you do? I fell, said Annabelle. I was trying to slide all the way across the foyer, but I didn't slide at all. Well, that's probably why, said her mother, pointing at Annabelle's foot. You've been sliding so much, you've worn a hole in your sock. Annabelle looked closely at her favorite slippy socks. Sure enough, there was a large hole in one of them. Rats, she said. Now I won't be able to slide all the way across the foyer. Don't you have other pairs of socks with no holes in them, asked her mother. Yes, I do, said Annabelle, but these are my most favorite slippy socks, and I don't think that I can slide all the way across the foyer with just any old pair. Well, maybe we can buy you a new pair of socks this afternoon, said her mother. Now let's have some breakfast. Chapter 4 That afternoon, Annabelle and her brother and her baby sister all went with their mother to a department store. Annabelle's brother needed a new pair of glasses. Annabelle's mother bought some clothes for the baby. And Annabelle spent a long time looking at all of the socks before picking out the warmest, fuzziest pair that she could find. They looked like they could slide all the way to China. After some more errands, they all went to a friendly restaurant. Annabelle's father met them there, and after they'd eaten dinner, he gave each of them a present. The baby got a new rattle. Annabelle's brother got a yo-yo. Annabelle's mother got a fine gold necklace with a little bell on it. And Annabelle got a small toy panda bear. Annabelle thanked her father for the present, but she would have rather had a nice necklace too. She sat quietly. Her father looked down at her. Is there something wrong, Annabelle, he asked. No, said Annabelle, looking down. Annabelle's father leaned in close to her. If you don't like the panda bear, he whispered, you can always give it to someone else who might like it better, okay? Okay, said Annabelle. She slipped the panda bear into her pocket, wondering who might like to have a panda bear. When the family got home, it was time for Annabelle to go to bed. 
She set her new socks right beside her bed so that she could put them on as soon as she got up the next morning. Chapter 5 The first thing Annabelle did the next day was to put on her new socks. They felt good. She walked once around the room, wiggling her toes in the ends of the socks. Then she stepped out into the hall. Annabelle backed up to the end of the hall, then ran. She ran hard, harder than she'd ever run before, her new socks flying over the floor. When she reached the end of the hallway, she planted her feet, braced herself, and started to slide. Annabelle slid out of the hallway and into the foyer. She slid past the entryway to the kitchen. She slid all the way to the other side of the foyer. And then she kept sliding. The wall in front of her melted away and a long hallway stretched out in front of her. She slid down the hallway faster and faster and she could see houses and fields and rivers through the windows along the hall. Then she saw great plains, then mountains, then deserts and more mountains and a great blue ocean. Still she slid on, speeding along in her fuzzy new socks. In what seemed like no time at all, she passed islands and then more hills and fields and mountains and cities, then another blue sea, then more cities and towns and roads and villages. And just as quickly as it had all started, she came sliding to a stop. Annabelle was in a foyer that looked very much like her the foyer in her house. She turned around and looked back down the hallway, which looked very much like the hallway in her house. She looked into the kitchen and saw a dark-haired woman making breakfast on a low table. The woman had a round, friendly face. She smiled at Annabelle and said something in a strange language that Annabelle did not understand. Chapter 6 Annabelle walked carefully over to the low table in the strange kitchen and sat down on a cushion next to it. The woman smiled at her again and served her some rice porridge and a piece of fried bread. Annabelle tasted the porridge, but found that she didn't like it, so she ate the bread, which was quite good. An older boy came into the kitchen and sat down at the table. Then a man carrying a baby came in. They all smiled at Annabelle and talked to each other in the same strange language. Annabelle sat quietly at the table, munching her bread. After breakfast, the man left the house to catch a bus. The boy rode his bicycle down the lane, and the woman took the baby into her room to change her. Annabelle stood in the foyer and looked down the hall. She took a deep breath, then ran as hard as she could down the hall. She raced past all of the doors, and at the last door, she planted her feet, braced herself, and crash! She slid right into the door at the end of the hallway. After a minute, Annabelle took another deep breath and ran as hard as she could back down the hallway. At the last door, she planted her feet, braced herself, and slid all the way across the foyer until, bump, she stopped against the wall. Now Annabelle was a little bit concerned because she didn't know where she was, she couldn't understand what anyone was saying, and she wasn't sure that she'd be able to get back home. Chapter 7 Annabelle spent the rest of the morning sliding up and down the hallway until her legs were tired, but she was still in the house that wasn't hers. The dark-haired woman made Annabelle some soup for lunch. After lunch, she gave Annabelle a pair of shoes and took her out to a playground where there were lots of other kids. Annabelle couldn't understand what any of the children were saying, but she still had fun running and playing with them. After the playground, they went to a market. It was very busy with people walking or riding bicycles all up and down the street. Almost everyone there had dark hair except for Annabelle. When they got back to the strange house, the older boy was there. He and Annabelle played checkers while the woman made dinner. The man came home and they all sat down at the low table and had a very good dinner of rice, fish, and vegetables. The rest of the family talked to each other, but Annabelle sat quietly and ate her food. When it was time for bed, Annabelle stood in the foyer and looked down the hall. She closed her eyes tightly and concentrated very hard on her own house and her own hallway, which led to her own room. Then she ran as hard as she could down the hall, planted her feet, and slid. She came to a stop in front of the last door, which was open to a girl's bedroom. There were some toys and dolls in it and a low bed. The dark-haired woman came down the hall and led Annabelle into the room. She turned down the covers on the bed, helped Annabelle into a pair of pajamas, and tucked her in. Then she sang a song which Annabelle thought was very pretty, even though she couldn't understand the words. The dark-haired woman kissed Annabelle goodnight and turned out the light. Annabelle lay in the strange bed, in the strange room, in the strange house, in the strange land and eventually she fell asleep. 
Chapter 8 When Annabelle woke up the next morning, she saw that she was still not in her own bedroom. Her clothes were on a chair next to the bed, and she noticed that the little panda bear that her father had given her had fallen out of one of the pockets. She picked it up and placed it on the table next to the bed. Then she got dressed, put on her fuzzy, slippy socks, and stepped out into the hallway. Annabelle stared down the long hallway and thought about her own home very, very hard. Then she ran as fast as she could, planted her feet, and slid. She came to a stop in the foyer, looking into the kitchen. The dark-haired woman was sitting by the table, feeding the baby. She looked up at Annabelle and smiled, then said something that Annabelle didn't understand. Then Annabelle began to cry. She stood there looking into the kitchen as the tears slid down her cheeks. She wanted to tell the woman that she wanted to go home, to her home, but no one here could understand anything she said, so she stood there and cried. The dark-haired woman came over to Annabelle and gave her a big hug, then held her close and sang her another song. This made Annabelle feel a little bit better, but she still just wanted to go home. The woman looked at Annabelle and wiped her tears away. Then she took off the fine silver necklace that she was wearing from around her neck. It had a little bell on it, just like the necklace that Annabelle's mother had, except this one was silver, not gold. The woman hooked the necklace around Annabelle's neck and gave her another hug. Annabelle looked into the smiling face of this woman. She had been so kind and welcoming to Annabelle, and Annabelle wanted to thank her for the necklace and for everything, but she didn't know how. Then she remembered the small panda bear that her father had given her. Annabelle ran down to the last bedroom and grabbed the panda bear off the table by the bed. Then she charged back up the hallway, happy to have a thank you gift to give the kind woman. When she got to the end of the hall, Annabelle planted her feet, braced herself, and slid to the entrance of the kitchen. But she didn't stop sliding. She slid across the foyer and then kept sliding down a very, very long hallway. She slid past fields and hills and a great stone wall, then deserts and mountains and plains and seas, then more towns and cities and roads, and then a big ocean and a coastline with lots of big cities and more towns and hills and fields. And then in no time at all, she slid to a stop. Chapter 9 Annabelle was standing in the foyer of her own house. Her mother was at the kitchen table feeding the baby. Good morning, Annabelle, said her mother. Did you have a good day yesterday? Annabelle opened her mouth to speak, but she didn't know what to say. Then she ran to her mother and threw her arms around her and told her how she'd slid all the way around the world to a house almost like this one, but in a strange land where no one spoke her language, and how there was a very nice woman who cooked her meals and had a necklace just like... Annabelle looked at her mother. Where's your necklace? she asked. I gave it away, said Annabelle's mother. There was a very nice little Chinese girl here yesterday who seemed very sad and missed her home. So I sang her a song and gave her my necklace to make her feel better. Did it work? asked Annabelle. Did she feel better? What do you think? asked her mother. Annabelle looked down at the silver necklace with the little bell hanging around her neck, then back up at her mother. I think it did, said Annabelle. Good, said her mother. Then let's have breakfast. Annabelle sat down at the table, and then her mother served her a delicious breakfast. After she ate, she skipped down the hall, and when she got almost to her bedroom door, she planted her feet, braced herself, and slid just a tiny bit. And she didn't run into anything. The end. That was Flippy Socks. I hope you enjoyed it. And you can catch me on some other video some other time. Bye.